Hello and welcome to another Game Dev Diary. Um, it's been a while since I've put one of these videos out, so I figured I'd show you guys what I'm working on. I'm not completely done with this piece yet, um, but I just wanted to give you guys a little update. Uh, so we're going to look today at the uh, lower resolution player character, um, the new block building uh, system, and some of the low level techniques uh, in the landscape drawing. So let's take a look at the character. So here, here's a... <laughs> Here's an attempt I made a long time ago to make a lower resolution character, and this is why I abandoned the attempt because he looks so terrible. Um, but here's the here's the character how he was in the previous videos, um, and here's the new guy that I made. I'm a lot happier with the way this guy looks than that first thing I showed you. <laughs> um, but so the reason I wanted to have a lower resolution character is because um, when the pixels are like one to one with the monitor pixels, uh, it, it, it's a strain on the eyes and uh, there's a lot of blurriness and uh, grain, graininess when you uh, rotate those textures. Um, so I wanted to have it to be 4 to 1. So it's not as low resolution as some of the, the games out there. Um, but it, it is pretty, uh, it is lower resolution than it was. Um, and something I wanted to avoid was I didn't want him to look too cute. But it's really hard to avoid when you got a lower resolution character, especially because. I wanted to reserve plenty of area for the eyes and the eyebrow so that he can emote properly. Um, that's going to be a real big uh, theme in this game is uh, being able to read what's going on with your character without having to have a million little stats on the HUD. So, you know, if he's hungry or if he's cold, he's scared, he's tired, all this kind of stuff he needs to be able to show with facial expression. So I had to have enough area on his face, which means his head had to be big. And I didn't want the whole character to be big, so his body's smaller than his head, which makes him look kind of cute, unfortunately. But I, I don't think it looks so bad that it's, it's not going to work. Um, I drew a couple little outfits for him here. Um, they also look cute, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, let me know in the comments uh, if you like this uh, new character look uh, better or worse than the previous one, or if you think they both suck. <laughs> um, here's his little walking animation. Okay. So the new block building system. Um, the first thing is the blocks are now about one third the size compared to how they were before. Um, and I've gotten rid of a lot of weird restrictions that they used to have. Like before they had a, a steepness restriction and that's gone. Um, before there could only be two surface blocks on top of the dirt and that, that's gone. You can have whatever blocks in whatever order now. Um, uh, so something I didn't like from before that it was really bothering me was that you try to make a building or something and it always looks really flat and short and I really didn't like that so with this system um, it's still very 2D but you can make something that looks taller um, and so from the from the beginning of this project the like the holy grail for me is uh, something that's very 2D that you don't feel like you need a first person camera you don't ever feel like you need to adjust the camera angle or rotate the camera at all um, but at the same time it, it's something that you can build like there's there's games that achieve that well in 2D but I haven't seen a game like that um, that also allows you to build the world you know uh, so if, if you can think of a good example leave one in the comments I, li I like to see it um, there's a lot of games that have this similar kind of uh, the camera angle with a top down and you can see the back wall um, but it, you just never, you, I, I haven't seen one of those where you can really build every little, uh, you know, every little voxel or whatever. Um, so that, that's the holy grail for me. And this this solution is still pretty weird. And you can see uh, at certain points uh, here in this little fast forwarded clip um, where I can't quite get a piece of the wall to look right. Um, and it, it, there's still awkwardness in it, but I, I think it, it, the potential's there. To, for that to be all polished and fixed. Um, it's already getting close. Uh, one of the weird uh, scenarios that I had to handle was like the the corners uh, along the back walls. Uh, I actually put it in a special case where if you keep adding blocks to the, to the little corner there, it'll tuck them down diagonally to fill in that area so that you're not, uh, so you're not unable to fill that little block in because you can't see the ground at that area to be able to fill it in. Um, so I'm going to keep playing with the usability and try to get it 
um, just right. But I think this style is is really has a lot of potential. Uh, the thing I like most is uh, the back wall in your in your home or whatever. Um, you know, now it has room to decorate. You can see the little bricks there uh, where I plan on putting a fireplace. Um, you'd be able to put like uh, banners and uh, paintings or whatever on that back wall. You really decorate it sort of the same way you can in uh, the platformer uh, crafting games like Terraria and uh, Starbound. Um, so I'm hoping this will be the best of both worlds. You know, not a platformer, but you still have that vertical space to decorate if you want. Um, uh, so, oh, the shadows. The shadows are uh, very functional rather than aesthetic. Um, and I'm probably not going to be able to change them to look nicer because they, they have a very clear purpose. And that's to break up optical illusions and to give you a, an idea of how high blocks are compared to their neighbors. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think about the uh, this revised block building system. I think it has a lot of potential. And finally, let's take a look at the, the low-level drawing stuff I was talking about. So with the kind of stuff that I'm doing here, uh, the biggest boost to performance you can get is reducing the total number of drawing calls you can make. And each block here is a drawing call, and each shadow on each side is a drawing. So it's if, if I were to draw this every frame, it would be incredibly uh, poor performance. So what I've done instead is um, made these, land, I call them landscape canvases. They're, they're separate textures, um, and whenever something changes, it draws to that texture. Um, but then it doesn't redraw all the little tiny details every frame. Every frame, what it does is draws this entire texture. So the, all the landscape here, let's unlock it so you can see. All the landscape here is just this three by three grid. It makes you know these nine drawing calls to draw all of, all of this, except for the characters. The characters are drawn separately. They're not drawn to canvases because they uh, they change so regularly. Um, but the the canvases are really cool because not only are they a texture, I built into them uh, the the uh, abstraction so that um, when you're making a draw call, you don't have to know if you're drawing to the world or if you're drawing to one of these canvases, it's it's completely abstracted for you. You just use the world coordinates. Um, so the way it works is when the camera moves, the grid adjusts, and it has to completely redraw three of these. But you notice I made I made it so that the colors change when the particular canvas is completely redrawn in this debug visualization. Um, so if I move over here, you see these six canvases. Uh, just shift over, they don't change color. And then these get new uh, new colors because that, that's to represent that they were completely redrawn. So in this way, we're not having to redraw the entire landscape when, uh, you know, when we move to a new area. So this makes it really efficient to draw stuff. Um, it's, it's more expensive, actually, uh, when you go to draw the block in the first place. Um, but you know that's that's only one frame or whatever, uh, so that that makes everything really efficient to draw. Um, and I'll probably be using uh, reusing a lot of this same architecture when I uh, redo the mini map. Um, so that's that's all I have for today. Um, next time we're gonna look at furniture. I'll have an actual fireplace here, some banners, uh, a table you can place items on, um, uh, working doors. Uh, and I'll try to have a lot of the uh, other system stuff back up and running, like the roofing and the vision and the lighting and that kind of thing. All right. Well, thanks for watching.